So welcome to the discussion on the Java Executor framework. As we'll see, Java Executor is a very powerful framework that's used for a variety of concurrency related capabilities in Java. And this is what I would call the sort of the mid school Java concurrency mechanisms. The old school Java concurrency mechanisms are the ones that came out in 1995. And those include threads and the core synchronizers that are part of Java built in monitor objects. And then the mid school mechanisms are what we're going to talk about now, the executor framework, which came out about a decade later. And then we'll talk uh, very briefly about the new school mechanisms that are available with modern Java. And those came out starting in 2010 with the Java fork join pool and continued on with various features that came out in 2014, like parallel streams, completable futures, and so on. And then even more recently are the, the very, very new school mechanisms like reactive streams. So this is kind of the, the mid-school mechanisms related to the executor framework. So as you'll see, there's a lot of moving parts to the executor framework. There's literally a couple dozen classes and interfaces that are involved. And we're going to describe what these mechanisms do and how you can program them effectively for, for various types of applications in uh, the examples you're going to do in the assignments. So the main purpose of all these myriad classes and interfaces is to decouple the creation and management of threads, and especially pools of threads, from application business logic, or the logic that the application needs in order to perform its various tasks. So they'll see that this separation of concerns is really at the heart of what this framework is all about. Like so many other frameworks, it's trying to shield application developers from all the details that are required to do lower level stuff. In this case, allocate and manage pools of threads. There's a utility class that's called the executors class. And this provides access to the key capabilities that make up the Java executor framework. What is a utility class? We've talked about this a couple of times before, but in a nutshell, a utility class is a class that is final, which means you can't subclass from it. It only contains static methods. It has no non-static state, and it has a private constructor. So as a consequence, you can't make instances of the class. You can't subclass the class. You can only use the various static methods, which largely work as factory methods using the good old gang of four factory method pattern. The factory methods that are defined in this class do many things, but for our purposes, the things that matter to us are the factory methods that are used to create various types of thread pools. And if you take a look at the link at the bottom of the page, you'll learn more about what thread pools are. And of course, we will cover a lot about what thread pools are in our upcoming discussions. The thread pools that are provided by the executor framework can be used to execute one-way or two-way tasks concurrently on multiple processors or multiple processor cores. And we'll talk in a second about what's a task. We'll talk in a second about what's a one-way task, what's a two-way task, and so on. And you'll get a very clear understanding, hopefully, just in a few minutes about how all these pieces work together to give you access to the underlying hardware resources. A task is a logical unit of work that ideally doesn't depend on the state result or any side effects of other tasks. So what we'd really like to have a task do is be embarrassingly parallel. And what that means is that there are no dependencies. That the classic example of embarrassingly parallel tasks are going to the laundromat or to your laundry room if you live in a dorm, for example, and then doing your laundry by putting them in multiple washing machines at the same time. So that's a great example of single instruction, multiple data style of processing, where you have the single instruction, which is do my wash, and then you have the multiple data, which is the different piles of clothes you put in the different machines. And of course, all those washing machines or, or dryers later in the cycles can run in parallel, and there's really no dependencies. You're not taking your wet clothes from one washer and putting them in another washer. <laughs> you just let them run to completion. So that's the end of the quick overview of the executor framework. There's a lot of pieces to it. It's very powerful, very cool and you'll get a chance to play around with some of the pieces in the assignments that we do in this course.